When I was five years old, there was a cartoon I really loved called Ulysses 31. That cartoon had a profound impact on me. To be completely honest with you, the impact was so profound that as soon as the first episodes were aired, I set off to build my first spaceship. I mean, can you imagine what a disaster it was? <laughs> as you can possibly expect, the furthest I was able to ever hover off the surface of the Earth was merely one foot off the ground with a pair of ropes and a plank my sweet grandma kindly provided. Many years passed since that photo was taken and I grew up, as some boys occasionally do. And as I was growing up, I realized that my fascination about this cartoon never faded away. And after many hours of agonizing thinking why this has never faded away, this fascination, I realized why. It was because of her. Her name, Shirka. Shirka was the spaceship's computer, but with a twist. She was more than a computer. She was an early form of artificial intelligence, with her soothing voice always there to support, to warn, to protect, even to sacrifice, so that its passengers, human beings, would focus only on the things that mattered most to them. Now then, many years have passed since the 80s when this cartoon was aired, and many things have changed. But one of the things that has not changed is a romantic quest of humanity for shirkas. In other words, for some sort of advanced intelligence, usually portrayed in Hollywood as intelligence coming from outer space, that will somehow get our hands on, put into good use, solve all our problems here on Earth, and live happily ever after. But what if I was to tell you that this advanced intelligence we so desperately seek does not need to come from galaxies far, far away, but is close, very close. Actually, so close, we can almost reach out and grab it. Dear friends, apart from trying to build spaceships in my spare time, quite unsuccessfully, clearly, I'm also heading a luckily more successful European business that is active on the Internet of Things, also known as IoT, a business whose mission is to accelerate human prosperity and progress by harnessing the very power of IoT. And my intention for today is to share with you my thoughts about how we can turn today's science fiction into tomorrow's reality by using nothing other than our nests, our shells, our cocoons, our buildings. Let me start with a fundamental question. Can you guess how much time of our lives do we spend within building environments? According to studies, the answer is a staggering 90%. That means we are born in a building, we spend 90% of our lives in buildings, and one day when we die, hopefully not any day soon, it will be in some sort of building if we are lucky. That means, if you think about it, for our whole lives, we have been sharing endless information with our buildings. Think about it. Every interaction, with our buildings, through buttons, switches, levers, booking and reservation systems, sensors, touch screens, badges, tags, is an opportunity for the building to learn more about our preferences and behaviors. How's that so, you might ask. I'm glad you asked. There are many ways I'm going to share with you one. Consider this. What is the one thing each building has without exception? 
rooms. And what is the one thing each room has without exception? Lights. Now let's assume that in a building like this, wherever there's a light, right next to it, we place a small and discreet sensor. So small that it has the size of a very small coin. And now humor me. Let's consider for a second that this sensor is not just a sensor. It also has a brain, or processor, if you want to be technical. A processor that is as powerful as the processor found in earlier versions of your iPhone, with memory and storage. So in summary, here's what we did. Wherever there's a light fixture next to it, we placed a device that can sense, think, remember, and most importantly, act. Can you see what we just managed to do? We just turned the ceiling into a thinking ceiling. We just introduced advanced intelligence that I was talking about earlier and deployed it everywhere. We just started turning our buildings into thinking and feeling entities with the use of these small sensors. And the beauty? of these small sensors whose size is the size of a small coin, is that they get smaller and smaller by the day, cheaper and cheaper by the day, more and more powerful by the day. One of them in the middle of the room, questionable results. Five or 10 strategically placed. Boy, we just introduced amazing possibilities in our lives. Shall we see a few of them? Please allow me to introduce you to three people. And let me start with Doris. Doris is a dementia patient. And unfortunately, one day she wanders away from her ward. Every hour, the disoriented Doris is out there, lost and confused. Is an hour she risks not making it back alive. Every hour, the disoriented Doris is out there, lost and confused is an hour that the hospital staff and her family are worried sick. What if there was a way for the thinking ceiling, through the advanced intelligence of the census I spoke to you about, to understand the moment Doris steps out and sees the thinking ceiling, can know which member of the hospital staff is close to her, to send on their smartphones a photo of Doris with a message, please bring her back. And just to be on the safe side, what if the thinking ceiling could alert the guards at the main door in case Doris makes it all the way there? And if and only if everything else has failed, the thinking ceiling to shut the doors so that Doris does not expose herself to grave and imminent danger out there. According to the World Health Organization, there are 55 million dementia patients globally, and there are 10 million new cases of cognitive diseases per year, simply because we live longer. No amount of bracelets or smartwatches can play better the role of a guardian angel other than the buildings these patients reside in. Imagine how much easier would life be for Doris, but most importantly, imagine how many lives could be saved. Now let me introduce you to Helen. Helen is a reassuringly underpaid and overworked nurse at the local hospital. And amongst the many challenges she faces daily, she needs to spend a big part of her shift trying to find very expensive medical equipment that is usually lost, misplaced, or stolen, costing thousands of pounds to the healthcare system, and as a consequence to us, the taxpayers, but most importantly, costing valuable time to nurse Helen, who spends a big part of her shift trying to find a wheelchair or a bladder pump rather than tending to her patients. I wonder, do you have any idea how much time does each nurse spend during his or her shift trying to find medical equipment? 
According to a study from Frost and Sullivan, it's a staggering 72 minutes. In a world of burnt out nurses, where every second matters in saving lives, can we afford to have a nurse spend 72 minutes of his or her shift playing Sherlock rather than tending to patients? What if there was a way for the thinking ceiling through the advanced intelligence of the sensors I spoke to you about to identify in a matter of seconds where is what and which piece of equipment is needed and show it in Nurse Helen's smartphone or tablet? Imagine how much easier would life be for Nurse Helen, but most importantly, imagine how many lives could be saved. Now, let me introduce you finally to Leo. Leo is a creatively restless five years old boy. He has a bad habit. Every once in a while, he decides to venture off and discover the world without the consent of his parents, written or verbal. <laughs> and for this very reason, his parents always make sure the front door is locked. But one day, even though both his parents are at home, they are in this back-to-back -back conference call zombie hypnosis mode. And this is exactly when Leo discovers in a drawer the keys of the front door. And being the ingenious devil he is, he places a stool on top of a chair and a chair on top of an armchair, and he unlocks the door. A few minutes later, his father, clearly oblivious of what's happening, is on his way to the kitchen to make a cup of coffee until he realizes that the front door is open. Panic kicks in. Luckily, Leo is discovered 10 minutes later in a neighbor's garden, conversing happily with the neighbor's dogs. But in these 10 minutes, his parents aged 10 years. How do I know? Leo is my son, and I'm clearly one of the lucky ones, but I could easily not have been. Now, what if there was a way for the thinking ceiling through the advanced intelligence of the sensors I spoke to you about to identify the moment the doors open or, and they shouldn't, and send footage from the front door to his parents' smartphones, while at the same time the thinking ceiling would connect with the smart devices of the house, such as the Alexas or the Google Homes, and play an audio message like, dum dum, wake up, your son is leaving, go fetch him. <laughs> How many parents, nursery staff, teachers would be able to have a better night's sleep but most importantly, how many lives could be saved? Imagine buildings that can understand whether an elderly person has fallen and they can immediately call for an ambulance, saving valuable time that can make the difference between life and death. How many lives could be saved? Imagine buildings that can warn us of early signs of a Parkinson's disease by overhearing the keystrokes as we type and comparing them with relevant databases. How many lives could be saved? Imagine buildings that can assess our risk of developing a heart disease by identifying irregular heartbeats coming out of the seats that we sit on and immediately book us an appointment with a specialist. How many lives could be saved? Imagine buildings that can warn us whether we develop early signs of an immune disease by analyzing the breath we exhale using the air sensors in the building and booking us immediately an appointment with a doctor without wasting time. How many lives could be saved? And the fact is that the benefits of this technology that I'm talking to you about, technology that's so small, it has the size of a small coin, 
do not need to be limited into life-threatening situations. We can talk about many other things. I can talk to you about operational efficiencies, savings, productivity gains, sustainability impact. But what is more precious than life itself? Dear friends, if there's one thing that describes humanity, it's the desire for more. Some people call it greed. I call it progress. In a hyper-connected world, where the pace of change will never be that slow again, and with more distractions than ever before, we could definitely use some help on our way to secure a healthier, happier, and better future for us and our loved ones. And the good news, this help does not need to come from galaxies far, far away, but it is close, very close. So close, you can almost reach out and grab it. It resides within the places where we spend 90% of our lives. And it can have many shapes or forms, one of which is the shape of a small yet very powerful sensor that is the size of a small coin. And on this note, I'd like to invite you to embrace this type of technology and spread it out everywhere. For it's exactly this type of technology that can turn our shells, our nests, our cocoons, our buildings, from brick and mortar into what some people call guardian angels, what I still call shirka, and what you might call one day the friends who never knew we had. Thank you.